I recently posted a video inspired by a comment under one of my videos on how to find joy in creating when you feel overwhelmed by taking one baby step at a time. This was the outcome of that process and I will link this video for you below in case you missed it. So under this video, I found a comment by Margaret Comella 3318, which I would like to address. So Margaret writes, Susie Q 2463. So Susie was the one that inspired me to create this. I could have written your comment. It's frightening and comforting to hear how much you sound like me. I have spent years collecting a shameful amount of craft supplies and have used very little. And everything I make, I end up hating. I have taken hundreds of screenshots of things other people have done and swear I'm going to do it, but I never do. And when I go to try again, I even get overwhelmed by all my choices in my pictures. So I try to make something up and then I hate it. Arr! It's so frustrating and defeating. I think where I am right now is that I should pick something out of my pictures that looks pretty easy and try to copy it exactly and see how I feel about it. Barbara, this was addressed during last year's Defemorember and you said you felt there was nothing wrong with copying until we found our own way. Maybe you could make a video about recreating someone else's small project like a tag. I'm sure there are those of us that want to be creative, but just don't have the gene others have. I am also fighting poor health, so that doesn't help either. If anyone new to crafting is looking at this, please go very easy on the supplies at first. Start with a few basics. Junk journaling was created from the idea of making something out of trash, but has turned into another giant exercise in consumerism and shopping problems. I don't feel comfortable with who I've become. If I enjoyed playing with all of it, that would be another story. Barbara, thank you so much for your brave exploration of these tough issues. Thank you so much for your comment, Margaret. Again, I think many of us can relate. I perfectly agree. If you are a beginner, go easy on the supplies at first. I actually have a beginner's playlist on my channel, which I will link for you below as well. One of those videos is about my most favorite craft supplies. Maybe have a look at that if you don't know what you need and what you don't. Obviously, everybody's choices are going to be different, but maybe it's a helpful video. But coming back to this, in today's video, we're going to head on over to Pinterest and pick a photo to make a card. I chose a card as ephemera because some of you also commented that it motivates you to create for someone else rather than for yourself. So with this card, you have the option of adding it either to your own project or gifting it to someone else. That was a very long intro. Welcome, it's Barbara from Vienna, Austria. So this is my Pinterest account. You are welcome to follow me, but I have to say that I don't do a lot on Pinterest. I'm not here very often and I don't really check my messages. So if you want to message me directly, please either send me an email. My email address is under all of my videos or send me a direct message on Instagram. So I have this board called Pinterest Inspired, which currently has 47 pins. So if you follow me, you can see these exact pins. And I already decided on one, which is this one right here. So it's by Sketchbook Diaries Camilla do Rosario. What I love about this is it seems really doable. I love the neutral materials that she used. I love that she used a slide and a photo on her dress. And it looks like something that could be done within a short amount of time. So this is my inspiration for today's card. Obviously, even if I would try to copy exactly this, it's never going to be exactly this because I do not have the same materials. So let me take you through the process of trying to quote, copy this idea. So I first need to figure out how am I going to get an image of an upper body of a girl because I know I cannot draw something that I would be happy with. So one option might be to go through magazines that you have. I don't have a single magazine, so that's not an option for me. 
maybe you can draw. If you can draw, then please draw. That would make it so much more special. I'm going to make my life very easy. I'm going to look at my most recent digital kit, Feathered Friends. These are the backgrounds, and I will link these for you below. This is not about you buying my digital kit. I'm, of course, happy if you do. <laughs> but this is what I have at my fingertips. I don't know where else I could find an image that is suitable, so I'm going to use what I have here. So in my kit, I have a couple of images that might work for this. I think I will go for this one. This is my background page number three, because this here looks like that could work really well. The other option might be this one here, or this one. Even this one could work, or this one here. I very strongly also considered, but I think she's a bit dark here from the lighting. Like she's in the shadows. So I think I will go with this one. What already makes my life easier with this image is that it's already fairly small. I think I don't have to shrink it too much to make it work for a card. So I'm going to go ahead and print this. So I only want the selected image. I want best quality. I think I want to shrink it as well. So let's scale it to, let's say 50%. Hopefully that will work. I'm going to print this on some heavier cardstock. If you can't print on heavier cardstock, print on regular copy paper. And before you cut the image out, you glue it onto some cardstock. So this is the image that I got. I I'm planning to add my image maybe to this paper bag, probably on the outside here. So I want to check that the proportions would work and I think that would be fine. It could even have been a little bit bigger, but I think I'm happy with this. This gives me a little more options on how long I want to make the crest. So next I want to fussy cut her head and neck and I think I'll just leave the cardstock where her dress is going to be because that will provide a nice base to work on. I kind of love the idea of having the bird on her hand like that so I'm thinking whether I should just leave that or cut it off and potentially reattach it later. I'll cut it off including her arm and that way we have the option to reattach it if we want. We can do some surgery. <laughs> She looks a bit strange right now, but hopefully that's going to change. Next, I'm going to figure out my card base. I'm going to take this gray green mixed media cardstock. It has 250 GSM or 115 pounds. It's by Claire Fontaine. I get this at my local art store. And I chose this color because this goes really well with my current kit and I will trim this to fit on my paper bag leaving a border here if you want to make a card that opens up then please take a cardstock that you can fold obviously so I have my substrate I have the lady and I want to think about the background because I don't just want to leave this as a plain background I'm going to add a book page underneath. I was lucky to find this Chinese book, I believe it's Chinese, a few years ago. It's either Chinese or Japanese. I honestly am not able to tell the difference. I just love this writing. So I'm going to cut a piece, again, leaving some of this green border. So I'm loving this already, but then when we put our lady on here, I do think this background is too prominent. So I do want to push that back a little bit. So I will do that with my cheap thin gesso if you don't have gesso just use some thinned down acrylic paint 
I'm using my brayer. If you don't have a brayer, just use a paintbrush or a card or something that you can use to spread your paint or gesso. Maybe a little more. I don't have to cover all of the edges. I think actually it's nice if we have those showing a little bit more. I'm concentrated more on the middle where our lady will be. So once this is dry, and obviously it's going to curl a little bit, but that is okay. I want to add just a little bit of interest on the back, uh, on the back, on this background by splattering some instant coffee. Or actually, wait, let's try something else. I have my water bottle here and maybe I can get a nice ring. Hmm. Maybe not, I don't know, I'll just try it. Not sure this is going to work. Maybe glass or porcelain. Yeah, this is not going to work. <laughs> can already tell it's not staying. Let's try a glass jar instead. I'm not sure this is going to work. Oh, it does. Look at that. I like it. You could also just do splatters, of course. All right. And then maybe a couple of splatters. Don't want to go crazy. Okay, that's it. Let's dry that. So once it's dry, we have this, which is a nice subtle background that won't distract from our main focal point, but it has some interest on it. Next, I have to edge this with walnut stain. You do you, maybe you don't have to, but I do. <laughs> And then I'm going to use a double-sided tape to adhere this to my card. If you would like to have a little bit of wiggle room when adhering this paper, because once it's down, it's down, you can add a little bit of glue stick on top of the tape. Yeah, it's a bit crooked. <laughs> I don't care. This is for myself and it's for my junk journal planner. So I'm totally fine with that. So we have Our Lady. We already see that our card looks way different than the Pinterest picture, which is a good thing. Even though we're copying it, we are putting our own touch to it. So when we look at this Pinterest picture, we see that in her dress, what works really nicely is that she has different values in the materials that she used. So she has some very light vintage papers, she has medium colored ones, and she has some really dark ones, which really makes for a beautiful contrast and which makes it very interesting to look at. So I have a drawer here full of some scraps. Let's take out these. These actually don't even belong here because this drawer is just for neutral scraps. As you can see, I have plenty. So I want to take some that have different values as well. I wonder if these actually might go here. No, not really. No, actually they could. It might be too much, but uh, I'll keep them out. This one would be great. Some lighter book page. Tissue paper, maybe not ideal because we have this on the background. Unless we cover it first with something white, then that would work. map yeah i think that would work so it's a beautiful vintage map different textures are great so i'll take some of this as well maybe something a little darker we have these blank 
book pages, which are usually at the front and at the end of vintage books. I always keep those. Of course, one with writing would be great. Oh, how about if we include this? It says, Ein Stern fiel vom Himmel, meaning a star fell from the sky. Oh, that would be so cute to integrate. I want to stick to neutrals. Could take some of this. Maybe even this has some gold in it. Never opposed to that. <laughs> we have some gray. And we have this one. Yeah, I think that is plenty. If I do more, I'm going to get overwhelmed. Oh, but there is this one with these math equations. <laughs> Need that. So I have some beautiful options here. And I think it would be helpful if I knew the exact shape of the dress. So I'm going to place her here on a scrap of cardstock. And I'm going to trace the shape that I want the dress to have. I think that will make it a lot easier. So mine is starting farther up than the one in the picture. And I also want to see where it needs to end. So I'll cut this shape out. This is, of course, just approximate. I will be going over these lines. I think this would be helpful. Should we leave a little bit more of her clothes showing? Let's do this. Let's show a little bit more of her upper body and make this a little shorter then. Like that. So I'm going to glue this on just on the top here. So now we have our shape. This is easier to work with now. So I want to start from the top. I think that's just easier. I have my shape. Do I want to cut it or tear it? I think, hmm, I think tearing would be better. I can't glue it on yet because there will be pieces that need to go underneath from the other layers. And I don't want it to be this big, I think. I could maybe glue it on top there. Let's be brave. Like that. And then that helps me. Oh, but this doesn't tear well, does it? Oh, it does. Okay. Kinda. Might have to uh, cut it after all. Let's tear some off here. Okay, we have our first piece. Then let's add something a little more light. How about from this book page? And how about we fold it a little bit? Mm-hmm, I like that. Actually, I want the edges cut because thinking of it, the edges wouldn't be fuzzy on a dress, would they? Because they're going around her body. Why would they be fuzzy? Why, Barbara? Why? <laughs> so let's make straight edges. It makes no sense. Let's glue this down. At least on the top here stick that underneath and we can glue this one down and we can cut this now let's add like with a medium tone how about some of this map paper this is part of vienna how cool is that I would like a part that is not too dark. So maybe from here. Or should it say Vienna? No, because I want the other sentiment showing. So I think that would be too much. Let's focus on one sentiment. If we put this underneath. I like the folds, so I want to do that again.
Mm -hmm. But maybe before I glue that one down, let me just cut this a little bit so I see better what's going on. Let's take our sentiment and see how to add that. Obviously, we cannot fold it because then we can't read it. And this is actually very similar in tone. So maybe that's not ideal. Although, actually, when we look at that picture, she also has two very similar tones next to each other. And it seems to be fine. Just wonder if it's weird to have something so straight on this dress. You know what I mean? But I love that it says that. Let's just do it. Not overthink things. Maybe we'll make this one a little bit shorter. Let's cut it. And this can go further up. Then we can glue this layer down. And cut these edges. Having that shape underneath is super helpful. Okay, what do we add down here? I think it needs to be something light again. How about this math thing? Yeah, I like that. I don't like math, but I like it in my artwork. <laughs> Let's make some more folds. one down this is such a fun cute project actually so I'm really happy with this and now I'm going to use my walnut stain to edge the dress and I just had a panic I've been looking for our arm with the bird now for like 10 minutes Thank goodness I finally found it. Actually, I'll edge the face and the head as well. And the bird and the arm. Because maybe we can make that work. That would be really cute. So that would have to come out approximately here. And that way she can keep her little bird. Yep, definitely needs the bird. I'm so happy I kept that. So since this said a star fell from the sky, I think we need a star on our card, right? I do have this star punch. I'm not sure this is the right solution, but let's try it. So I'm taking this vintage book page. I mean, it wouldn't be the worst. I love that it's the same color as we have here. But would a wonky star maybe be better? Can I draw a wonky star? Well, I can't draw a straight star, so a wonky should be easier. <laughs> Let me cut that out and then we'll compare. I think wonky is better, huh? Let's ink this up. And it looks like they're both looking at the star. I like that. So again, without overthinking it, I'm just going to glue this down. And obviously, if you don't have a sentiment that you're including in your dress, you could just add your own sentiment like here or wherever you have space on your card. And let's glue this down as well. Oh, actually, we can just cut this part off. We don't need to make it bulkier than necessary. So then in my case, I'm going to glue it onto my paper bag and I just realized, oh, do I need to ink up the edges? No, I just realized I could have made this into a pocket. Not thinking, too excited, <laughs> but it's okay. I have the big pocket here. The colors are beautiful together. It's such a simple card with simple materials. So limit the supplies you pull out and have on your desk. That reduces the choices, reduces the overwhelm. Let me know if this was helpful. Love you guys. Mwah! Mwah!